Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, welcome to another exciting edition of our City Impact Bible Study. I pray that today's study will enrich your life and enable you to add several supernatural ingredients to your faith so that you will not be barren, non-fruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who can tell me the portion of scripture I just quoted in that simple prayer? Second Peter. So it means you have been reading your Bible. Second Peter. This is interactive session. It has begun. Second Peter chapter 1. How many supernatural ingredients are you supposed to add to your faith before it becomes fruitful? Seven of them. And when those seven are added, you will not be unfruitful, you will not be barren. And guess what? A door will be opened, an entrance will be opened to into everlasting kingdom of God. And guess what? You will not fall. Amen. What are these seven things? Add to your faith, virtue. To virtue, knowledge. To knowledge, self-control. To self-control, Oh, you are reading your Bible. Perseverance. And to perseverance, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, love. If these things are in you, you think faith is everything? What about faith without virtue? Virtue has left me, Jesus said. He knew the tangibility of what he carried. Somebody's faith pulled on that virtue. And when that virtue is added to our faith, healing manifested. What is done already is done. There's nothing more to add to it. Lift up your hand and say with me, I am crucified with Christ. Christ. Nevertheless, I live. live. Yet not I. It is Christ who lives in me. The life I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. To do otherwise is to frustrate grace in my life. I will not frustrate grace in my life. Have you looked in the mirror before? And you look at yourself from head to toe and say, hey, I don't look righteous. Hey, I remember what I did yesterday. I remember what I said yesterday. My God, help me. I am not righteous. No, you are. Because a part of you that is righteous is your spirit man. And God is in constant communication with that spirit man. He's growing, he's maturing, and he's going to overpower the rest of you that seems to be going in the wrong direction. Amen. Say with me, he who knew no sin, became sin for me, that I might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So what are you? I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Can I hear you say it loud? I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And the people said, Amen. The Bible says if you do not lack these things, you will make your, your call an election sure. Lift up your hand and say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask today that these supernatural ingredients be cultivated in me by the Holy Spirit in Jesus' mighty name. You need to cooperate with the Holy Spirit for that to happen. And the easiest way to cooperate is to pray, to supplicate, to give thanks to God, 
and to meditate on things that add value. Philippians chapter number four. That's all. Be anxious for nothing. Give me Philippians four, verse four. Be anxious for nothing. The moment you are anxious for something, you promote that thing above your God. You magnify it above your God. I don't care what it is. Be anxious for nothing. I can't hear you. If you were in the same street I was these few days in Abuja, and you saw the caliber of people, officers of the government coming to meet with you, you think I'm running government. But I am. Because influence is stronger than power. said to Mr. President, said it before and I repeated it again, I said, when we ran together, you are GMB and I was PTB. But right now you have become PMB. And you have changed me from PTB to PO Box. <laughs> because PMB is private mail bag. Everyone that wants to get something from your government, they know how to get to me. Here is something I know nothing about. They said, you can do it. Here is another thing. He said, they will keep on coming because you know you are not an influence peddler. I've never gone to him and said, do this for me. For my person, not once. Let me sure could surprise you. I've asked for others. Your influence capital is going to increase. Yeah. It will grow. Yeah. I'm trying to look for the person who was with me when I was going to the villa. We got to the gate and I said, Good evening, my name is. Yeah, welcome, sir. Papa, sir. I'm not saying these things to show off. I'm just letting you know that what God has asked us to do is working. Yes, sir. There's no point doing any other thing. By his grace, this nation will be fixed. Amen. Nigeria will be saved. Amen. Nigeria will be changed. Amen. Nigeria will become great in our lifetime. Amen. It is terrorists that will experience the terror of God. Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Be anxious for nothing. But by prayer, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Once you have prayed and you have believed, then start thanking Him for results. Not repeating your prayer anymore. Start thanking Him for reports. I want you to imagine civil service, that God has a structure, that something moves your file from table to table until it gets to where it will get the final signature. That thing is thanksgiving. In the courts of heaven, that thing is thanksgiving. Not complaining, not murmuring, not frowning, not calling attention to yourself. Because I know whom I have believed. Let me read. And the peace of God, I've explained that to you several times. The peace of God which passes, it does not make sense. Which surpasses all understanding, we guard your hearts and minds throughout Christ Jesus. Okay? What will guard your heart and your mind? I gave you the example of playing with kite. A time comes when your kite disappears into thin air and nobody sees it anymore. And anybody seeing you standing there will say, what, what is this useless boy doing there? Holding thread. But the thread is not falling down. You can feel the talk. You know the kite is there. How do you know answer is on the way? Peace. 
The peace of God is the umpire of God's will. You know you are in the epicenter of his will because you have peace all around you like a river. Others are breaking down, you just have peace. I have peace about Nigeria. Amen. This is the only place I sleep with my two eyes closed. If I go to America, I don't know what Trump will do. If I go to Britain, I don't know what Conevaro, Corona, Corona, no, what. In the name of Jesus, the blood of the Lamb is upon the lintel of your household. Amen. It's upon the door frame of your household. Amen. The blood, you are marked for Jesus Christ. Amen. You are noted in hell. Amen. Coronavirus cannot do anything to you. Amen. The power of the blood of the communion of the Lord Jesus Christ will destroy every disease. Amen. That plague will not operate in Nigeria. Amen. Jesus' mighty name. Did you see the WhatsApp message that's going around? I said, coronavirus, you have come to a wrong land. Ask what happened to your cousin Ebola. <laughs> we all put it in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Lift up your hand and thank God for what he did, what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. He was wounded for a transgression. He was bruised for iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By stripes, we were healed. God made a promise I will not put any plague on you like I did to the Egyptians. Lord, we thank you that we are yours. No plague will come near our dwelling. As a blood upon the lintel and doorposts of our house in Jesus' mighty name. I want you to pray for the church in Italy. Because they placed a ban on public meetings including church services. Because of coronavirus. Do you understand me? That's somebody pushing panic button there. In the name of Jesus, we pray for the church in Italy right now and everywhere in the world that nothing will hinder their coming together, that whatever disease is in the city, in Jesus' mighty name, we'll put a stop to it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you. Your word says we must not forsake the assembly of one another. So any disease or any sickness or any virus that will cause us not to gather in the name of Jesus against your word. And therefore your word is against it tonight. It is coronavirus that we die. The church of the living God will march on and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. At this time, I want you to rise on your feet. This is how they do it for us in Malaysia. Malaysia is in crisis, crisis of leadership. The righteous are being flushed out. The wicked are trying to come in. Darkness wants to engulf that land. We speak, let there be light. Amen. Let there be light in Malaysia. Let there be light in the governance structure of Malaysia. Right now in Jesus' name, let the righteous rise. Let them take over. In Jesus' name, that land will not be plunged into darkness anymore. We take it back from the jaw of hell. We bring Malaysia back into alignment with God's plan and God's purpose. That the victories already obtained will not be lost. That greater heights and greater ground will be taken by the people of God. By men who fear God who eschew covetousness and greed. Save Malaysia. Heal Malaysia. Restore Malaysia. Bring Malaysia back to you. You are the governor among the nations. In the name of Jesus, we speak life, order into Malaysia right now. The forces of darkness will not take over that nation. In Jesus' mighty name. One last prayer. It is openly stated, I saw it on the pages, front page of some of our newspapers today, that South Africa has entered into recession. Whatever is the cause of it, whoever is propelling or engineering it, we take them out of control. Yeah. We bring that nation back yeah. into fruitfulness and abundance. Yeah. We cancel recession in South Africa in the name of Jesus. The people of God will not have to suffer all kinds of indignation in that country and hunger. 
everything that is setting that nation back, we ask that it come back into alignment. South Africa, hear the word of the Lord. And let the righteous come into authority so that the people will not groan. Forgive that land for every kind of evil they have plunged themselves into. Bring them back to you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And the people said, Amen. Let me finish my reading so that we can crush Satan under our feet. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, this is how to get those seven in supernatural ingredients added to your faith. Your prayer, your supplication, your thanksgiving, till you get the peace of God. And then you begin to meditate on things that add value. Not useless news. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, <laughs> if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. And while you keep on meditating on those things, what will happen? You continue practicing the things which you have learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And the God of peace will be with you. The moment you are sandwiched between the peace of God and the God of peace, Satan is crushed under your feet. Yes. Say with me, and the God of peace. God of peace. We crush Satan, we crush Satan. Under, the feet under the feet of the saints, of the saints. In, Nigeria, in Nigeria, in Malaysia, in, Malaysia. in South Africa. In Italy and in every nation where God rules, where God reigns, and where his people are crying unto him in Jesus' mighty name. And the people said, Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Turn your Bible with me to Second Samuel chapter 11. There are 23 verses there. And 2 Samuel chapter 12, there are 25 verses there that we'll read. 2 Samuel 11, 1 to 23. It happened in the spring of the year, at a time when kings go out to battle, that David sent to Joab, sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the people of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David remained where? At Jerusalem. Then it happened one evening that David arose from his bed and walked on the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman bathing. And the woman was very beautiful to behold. If David said the woman was beautiful, believe him. Because he was a woman's man. At the age of 30, he already had six wives. He was still looking at another one. So David sent and inquired about the woman. Somebody say inquiry. And someone said, is this not Bathsheba? He was not the only one who had been looking. Is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite? They gave full, <laughs> full CV. Then David sent messengers and took her. God. That word suggests to me there was a form of oppression and took her. Now, it wasn't that they harassed her, but when they showed up and said, The king would like to see you in a minute, what do you say? It's called Olog by a wall. But her husband was not lazy. Or it's called Obak Beseli. Esekese. The king plays it and took her. Now that was a word I never saw since they have been reading the story. I just saw the word when I was preparing. I didn't see took. Because what do you do against king like David? Who sent people to you to come? You say you are not coming? The man who killed Goliath. (laughs) 
and he lay with her. That one is where I cannot prove it was rape. There's nothing here that suggested that Bathsheba also resisted or cried for help or said no. Maybe she was overwhelmed by the person of the king or the environment of the palace that was totally different from an apartment given to Uriah. Maybe the shape of the room or the bed. I'm just using my imagination. Don't let your own run riot. <laughs> For she was cleansed from her impurity. I don't want to do exegesis on all this. Let me go straight to the subject. And she returned to a house. You know the story. Should I read it line by line? Maybe another time. She returned to a house. Did she return empty? Mm. Was it cheap and free sex? Did David give us something? It's not recorded. But we know she returned to her house. Say she returned. She Let me read one more. <laughs> one or two more verses there. And the woman conceived. Tell your neighbor, a trial we conceive you. <laughs> So it's better to avoid. <laughs> Somebody looked at me one day and said, if your mother has not given birth to you, she would have died. <laughs> if she had you inside of her and you didn't come out, you would have killed her from inside. It's not my fault. I see things that others don't see. Was David thinking of conception? She saw a beautiful lady and they told her whose father and grandfather she heard whose daughter she was and granddaughter. She was granddaughter of Ahithophel, the chief counselor of David. But they said she was married to Uriah. Said, Uriah, the Hittite. <laughs> Hittite in Louis, Lo Ramoto Dabai. <laughs> oh, I have a lot to teach in this season on this, what I call a moral tumble. And the woman conceived, so she sent and told David and said, I am with child. Who did she send? You don't know what that means? Madam, are you not Yoruba? You're not Yoruba, you're Ido. Idoma, red cap or black, or red, and, red and white, okay, so red and black, I know your people. Uh, I was, uh, they, they crowned me chief king when I went there to preach, it was black and white. I, I know your people. Uh, your people, uh, the former Senate president was part of your people, uh-huh, Idoma people. Asunka Kauni Buffet simply means the woman who releases herself to you and stretches on the floor for you to come on top is not free of charge. Madam, uh -huh. uh -huh. if it's free of charge, see how much your husband has been spending. Mm. 
I do comes with responsibility. Whether there was I do here, I know I do. The woman said, I, and she sent who? So that simply means after that one day, access to the palace was no problem. Look, if you are not well cooked, go to power. And see what kinds of women loiter around the place. There are three inseparable uh, triplets. Power, sex, and money. If you're not well cooked, they will come and offer themselves to you free of charge. But you start paying from that day. I remember 2011 clearly. Clearly. I was in my suite, and these people had been booking appointments for a long time, like that appointment. And I didn't know why they eventually they gained access to women. From the moment they stepped in, their perfume will suspend your reasoning. But my people were trained. After five, ten minutes, they must look in to see what I'm doing. I hope you are fine, sir. Do you need tea or coffee? It's deliberate. <laughs> Your flesh is not born again. It has to be subdued. And don't go alone. I mean every word. The smell of their perfume will suspend your reasoning. We just come to tell you that anything you need will be there for you. I don't need anything. <laughs> Do we need to read further? Then David put a plan in place immediately. Because in Israel, when adultery is committed, somebody must die. And David said, it's not going to be me. It will be this Hittite. The woman also must not die because she's carrying my baby. Pastor Matthew Ashimolo Accompany me one day to the stores in Wood Green. I was picking items for my wife. And this lady carried a baby and came to greet me. Daddy, daddy, this is your child. <laughs> you know what Pastor Matthew did? He moved backwards. <laughs> I said, a woman, what do you mean? He was listening, he was moving backward. I said, what do you mean? He said, you came to crusade in a prayer, and you laid hands on me. I'd been barren all my life. This is my first child. It is yours. I said, it's your husband's. <laughs> You know, Yorubas have a way of saying their brother's wife is their wife. They, are, they say, Yawo Minko. They try it with me when I got married. They say, Yawo Minko. I say, your wife is at home. <laughs> your own wife is at home. My own is different from your own. <laughs> it's a good culture, but uh, it has boundary. <laughs> Somebody met MKO and said, uh, the, uh, this is your child. He said, Ibuni <laughs> Where did I? Let me see. Let me see the ear. If it's Maya, we know. Uh, Abba. 
The woman sent to him and said, I am with child. He said, good. Job, send Uriah to me. Uh, the heart of man is desperately <laughs> wicked. If this could happen to a man who wrote almost all the Psalms, who was called a friend of God, who was a man after God's heart, let's check how good your own heart can be there. It was the same person who wrote, If we make mark for sin, who can stand? He knew himself. He brought Uriah home. I mean, but, uh, Uriah home. Uriah, you have been doing so well in the battle. I decided to give you dinner. And got him drunk. And said, go home and sleep with your wife tonight. What was he trying to do? <laughs> so he will now send to the woman and said, you are with child, it's not mine. Your husband also slept with you. And there was no DNA in those days. <laughs> Uriah did not go home. Uriah slept with the guys. And they reported to the king they were part of the plot. Yes, sir. It's called the king's secret service. They said, King, he didn't go home last night, though. I said, Don't worry. We gave him scotch on the rock triple last night. Today, <laughs> we are going to give him something stronger. They got the man drunk. He was tipsy. He went down the steps. He still stayed at the gate. And the king said, Out for two, you have not gone home. I wanted to give you some relief. He said, Lord, my Lord the king. How can the ark of the covenant of the God of Israel be in the battlefield? And I will go and sleep with my wife. There will be Hittites in heaven and there will be Israelites in hell. If God will not intervene. Do you understand me? That man was willing to risk his life for the ark of the covenant of the God of Israel. And David, the man who created a tent for the ark was just lounging and enjoying himself in the cool of the day. So he said, it's not my fault. So he created the first puzzle bomb in human history. He wrote a letter, gave to him, said, when you get to the battlefield, give to Joab to read. It was sealed. Joab read it. He said, keep Uriah the Hittite in the forefront of the hottest battle. And let men, strong men, withdraw themselves from him. See, what the enemy wants to do at any time is to influence strong men among you to pull away so that they can hit me. Who truly killed Uriah? You will say, David, he only wrote a letter. Joab executed it. But if finally, it was a strong man who pulled away from him. That got him killed. And the moment his death was announced, David sent the same courier, come over. It's over. He's dead. The Bible says, and she mourned for her husband, which means she did not participate in eliminating him. But after money, what are you going to do? She became the wife of David. I've done enough of the story that can take us to chapter 12. Let's see the beginning of chapter 12 and then announce the topic and I will continue little by little until you get it. And you are going to pray for this unusual Unique helpers of destiny called angels of mercy. Amen. Chapter 12. Then the Lord sent Nathan to David and came to him and said to him, There were two men in one city, one rich and the other poor. 
The rich man had exceedingly many flocks and herds. You can put their wives and concubines. But the poor man had nothing except one little ewe lamb. So you could see, you could judge that even the age of Bathsheba was not something to write home about in terms of maturity. Hello. Because they married young in those days. A little ewe. He had sheep. He had all kinds of things. But this one had a little ewe. Except one little ewe lamb, which he had bought and nourished. And he grew up together with him and with his children. He ate of his own food and drank from his own cup. And lay in his bosom. The king did not realize where this is going. And was like a daughter to him. And a traveler came to the rich man, who refused to take from his own flock and from his own herd to prepare one for the wayfaring man, Onirikuni, who had come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared it for the man who had come to him. So David's anger was greatly aroused against the man. Everybody clap for a just king. He was such a just king. His anger was greatly aroused. And he said to Nathan, as the Lord lives, the man who has done this shall surely die. And he shall restore for four for the lamb because he did this thing and because he had no pity. Then Nathan said to David, you are the man. Did David know what he did was wrong? Yes. He knew it was wrong. He just covered one wrong with another wrong. If he did not think it was wrong, why would he be greatly angry? You know what that is called? Selective integrity. When others do it, it is wrong. When I do it, God understands. He doesn't. Because he doesn't, he sent Nathan. You know the rest of the story. We'll go deeper into it in the future as we glean eight vital lessons from this story. But I'm not going near that tonight. The subject of our contemplation tonight is angels of mercy a unique class of destiny helpers. See that with me, angels of mercy. mercy. A unique class of helpers of destiny. I can't hear you. Okay, let's put it this way if that's too long for you. Say with me, angels of mercy. A unique class of destiny helpers. Angels of Mercy, a unique class of destiny helpers. When you hear the word angels of mercy, I do not mean ministering spirits that are sent forth to minister to them that shall be heirs of salvation. In that class, you find the likes of Gabriel, Michael, and innumerable company of cherubim and seraphim. The angels of mercy under consideration tonight are human helpers of destiny. They are not necessarily above or below you, or above or below your social status, but will nonetheless mentor you as a friend or peer. If you think that such people should not be referred to as angels, then you have to go into the Bible and see what the Lord Jesus Christ called the seven pastors of the seven churches in Asia. They were called to the angel of church at Ephesus, angel of the church, at Sardis, angels of the church, in Philadelphia. God's watchmen over the city And God's watchmen over the souls of men and women in a local church 
are the ones likened to angels and stars. In the book of Revelation, in the book of Daniel, in the book of Ezekiel, you see it all there. God will raise a man like Ezekiel and he will ask him to go to Tel Aviv and sit in the midst of those in captivity. And he'll be there seven days because if you don't wear their shoes, you cannot have empathy. He said, I sat where the people sat. If you have not been sheep, you cannot be shepherd. Because it takes sheep to know what sheep goes through. And when a sheep has gone through process of maturity and becomes a shepherd, he knows how to minister because he knows the way of sheep. Do you understand me? And the moment after seven days that he sat there not saying anything, God said, I've set you a watchman now. And the functions of a watchman will be set in Ezekiel 33. Part of it is in Ezekiel 3, part is in Ezekiel 33. If you read the book of Daniel, you will see the watchers and the holy ones. And if you don't think those watchmen and those pastors and those peers like Nathan the prophet are angels, then you need to read Revelation and see when the angel, the seventh angel, was showing everything to John. He said, I fell down at his feet and he lifted me up and said, don't do that, worship God. I'm one of you, I'm just like you, one of the servants of God. And when we eventually get to heaven, we'll be like angels. Do you understand me? So when I say angels of mercy, I'm talking about carriers and couriers of God's mercy to you in time of need. But for Nathan, what David did would have backfired completely on him and eliminated him because he had afflicted the poor at the gate. And God had a standard punishment or standard consequence of such action. Proverbs 22. Verses 22 and 23. Proverbs 22. Verses 22 and 23. Do not rob the poor because it's poor. Now, if that woman was a Hitophel's wife or Joab's wife, would David have dared? Do not rob the poor because he's poor, nor oppress the afflicted at the gate. For the Lord will plead their cause and plunder what? Now, this is more deadly than burning your house down. It will plunder the soul of those who plunder them. You know what it means to plunder your soul? You are as good as dead. Your soul will be darkened. You'll be given over. you have a reprobate mind because your soul is plundered. You will not have a sense of right or wrong anymore. you become amoral. Not just immoral. You will plunder the soul of those who plunder them. Let me share a few thoughts with you. Hebrews 13, 17. Let's be careful so that we do not grieve such angels that are set over us. Hebrews 13, 17. Obey those, not one man. Obey those who rule over you and be submissive for they watch out for your souls as those who must give account. Let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that will be unprofitable for you. What is the assignment? To watch over your souls. There are watchmen watching over your souls. And if they see something wrong that they bring to your attention, it's because they love you and they care. 
Somebody sent me a message today that grieved my heart. Not for what he did or said about me, it's about himself. He was reporting himself to me and said, I just want to give him an account of myself for this number of years. This had happened, this had happened, this had happened. And my heart was grieved. I can't explain why. You would think it would be something that is, will cause me joy, but it caused me sorrow. Because I know the consequences of those things if things are not tidied up and properly done. One character trait these human angels or leaders, as, as a new, trans, new living translation calls them, when to the angel of the church in service, you see, to the leader. NIV and others call them messengers. One character trait of these human angels, one character trait they possess, is that they are not afraid to tell us the truth when we are wrong. They are not afraid to tell us the truth when we are wrong because they truly love us and desire the best for our lives. They are not afraid to tell us the truth. This type of people also do not flatter with their lips, especially when we are on the wrong path. They do not flatter with their lips. Say to your neighbor, flattery, it's like cologne water. You may smell it, but please don't swallow it. They will not flatter you with their lips. Rather, they will pray for you and walk with you till you have the victory. One more thing they will not do, they will not cover up or make excuses for you. They will not cover up or make excuses for you Instead, they will hold you accountable, pray for you, and walk with you till you have victory. They will not cover up or make excuses for you. In this class of angels of mercy, this unique helpers of destiny is Nathan the prophet, who confronted David with his sin of adultery with Bathsheba, and help him to confess his atrocity in time so that his blunder did not completely destroy him. As you read the story this evening, you realize that David has a plan that afflicted and killed Uriah, robbed him of his wife. The consequences of this atrocity are humongous but for Nathan's timely intervention. Let's look at a biblical portrait of such angels of mercy and helpers of destiny. Proverbs 28, verse 23. Proverbs 28, verse 23. Ready? Read. He who rebukes a man will find more favor afterward than he will flatter us with the tongue. In this story, there was someone who told David who Bathsheba was. Yes or no? In this story, there were messengers or servants of David who went in and took Bathsheba. In this story, there must be someone who carried the message, I'm with child, back to David. Did any of these people say anything to David? They were compromisers with his evil. Who a leader surrounds himself with matters. If you're surrounded by those who cannot tell you when you're wrong, they will dig your grave with flattery. Read that verse of scripture one more time. Proverbs 28, 23. 
He who rebukes a man will find more favor afterward than he who flatters with a tongue. How many of you know that we need such people in our lives? A friend who comes in when others go out, but still lovingly removes the muckers in your eyes to show you how dirty you have become. Do you see wisdom displayed in Nathan's presentation to King David through his parable? Could you, do you see it? He knew he was talking to the king of the land, the man who had the power to kill and power to spare. He came with a parable. A parable that without doubt will convict the king. God must have given him unusual wisdom. Those who are going to operate in the class that Nathan operate will acquire some things from God. It's unusual that you always have a way to present a matter without being rude and arrogant. Let's see Proverbs 22 verse 11. God will put grace on such people's lips. Proverbs 22 verse 11. This is the character. This is the trait. This is their portrait. He will lose purity of heart and has grace on his lips. The king will be his friend. You know, there are many people who had asked different questions. And one of the pastors actually lambasted me and took me to the cleaners. Shame on you, Tunde Bakari. Did you watch the video? In the days of Jonathan, you let people to a jota. Now you are not touching Borado. Shame on you, Tunde Bakari. And people wanted to jump and say, leave him alone. Now he's not a fake miracle worker. You know the hand that was adjusting. <laughs> he has hit his own waterloo. I didn't respond once. So you see, chaos does not cause us to respond. <laughs> I didn't respond once. I left him to himself. But President Jonathan remains eternally grateful for the role I played. I didn't display it in public space. There are high commissioners, or what do you call them? Ambassadors that were sent into this nation that asked me, what exactly are you looking for running up and down? I said, I do not want my nation to bleed. And we secure a smooth transition from behind the scene without carrying any or doing anything in public space. We walk there night tirelessly until we secure what made President Jonathan to let go. I remember my final meeting with him. He said, I was ill. That was the time I slumped, if you remember. And he said, he was not going to Eagle School. I would not go there because they would boo him. I said, if anybody boos you there, let it fall upon me. You are going to go there like a gallant soldier. You are going to do what you need to do. And I call all our men, no boo, no stone, nothing, because this man is not an election loser, he's a constitutional change agent. May God do to me and give to me everything I've labored for in this nation. Amen. If I've done evil, we'll come back. If we have done good, there'll be a payday. Amen. Do you understand me? If you are going to be a friend of kings and those in power, your heart must be pure. Grace must be upon your lips. There are people who think, go, let us, let us just go and, and cause trouble. No. When I led protests, it was orderly. Do you understand me? No life was lost. No property was damaged. Even area boys were returning phones that were lost on the field. Do you understand me? And that shows there was order there. I'm not area boy. And that does not mean area boys are not human beings. It means that there are certain characteristics, traits I cannot exhibit. I'm not part of any Aluta continua. Because if the struggle continues, you have no end. Do you understand me? Everything we do is tailor-made. 
for that season, and when it stops, it stops. I'm not a ruffian running a hopeless race. I follow God and his instructions. If he says march, I march. If he says jump, I jump. If he says stay at home, I stay. And I will not compromise my faith, not on account of any man, because I will ultimately give account to God. If you don't have grace in your lips and purity of heart, no king will be your friend. At a time in 2014 or so, even some of my friends who are close to me were confused. Some thought I'd sold out. Say, has he gone to PDP? They didn't know where I was. It was confusing. I just looked at And I came here. I said, yes, I belong to a party. The name of the party is Tawakali to Mobolong Duro. And number two, Ashotun Shosin. My baby Konje. I was looking at the, at the big picture. One day I'll be able to tell you what would have happened. That God averted because he gave us wisdom to appeal to both sides. Brothers and sisters, those who are preached at the level of Nathan the prophet must not show ill favoritism to anyone. They must not have the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ with respect of persons. They must call a spade a spade and not an agricultural implement. Whoever attains such level of oppression will have a good blessing upon himself from God. A good, unusual blessing will flow towards such. Proverbs 24, verses 23 and 25 to 25. Proverbs 24, verse 23 to 25. These things also belong to who? Do I have wise people here tonight? Are there wise people listening to me in South Africa, in Calgary, Canada, all over the world through live stream? These things also belong to the wise. It is not good to show partiality in judgment. He who says to the wicked, you are righteous. Him the people will curse. Nations will abhor him. But those who rebuke the wicked, we have the light and a good blessing will come upon them. What do you want? A good blessing or for nations to abhor you? That's why you can't go in and flatter and tell them everything is okay when it's not okay. They know when you come in, you are bringing ethical adjustment. Before the last sit, nation, uh, state of the nation broadcast in January, of course, I told Mr. President that I'll be giving that state of the nation uh, broadcast. You know what he said to me? You like trouble. I said, dear sir, because if I don't trouble my trouble, it will trouble me. And one broadcast caused sleepless night for so many people. They quickly went to the press and quoted everything out of context. We came back and made adjustment. So this is what we said. When I saw him, I said, these are your full copies of what I said. These are the videos in case anybody says anything to the contrary. We are doing what we are doing for the sake of our nation, not to get accolades. If God does not give you a thing, no man can give it to you. If it is yours from heaven, nobody can take it away from you. Let that be clear in your mind. Can I hear amen? Yeah. What do you want? What kind of role do you want to play in the life of your big brother, who is richer than you are, and who is helping you with your children's school fees? What kind of role do you want to play in the person who paid your last house rent? What kind of things are you going to do to a man who bought you a car? If he's going down the drain, yes, and there's nobody like you. Nathan came in and said, you are the man. Let me take it from there, from you are the man. And see what he said to David. And tell me if he was afraid of the king or afraid of God. Give me uh, chapter 12 of 2 Samuel, 
the parable of Nathan to David. Then Nathan said to David, you are the man. Thou says the Lord God of it. That's the important thing. He's not saying this is my opinion of what you have done. And then if it's your opinion, then uh, oh, can I tell you something? Are you ready? Will you write it down? Facts are stubborn. Facts are stubborn. You are entitled to have your opinion, but you are not entitled to have your own facts. I'm not sure you're getting that. Facts are facts. Truth is truth. You can't manufacture your own. You are entitled to your own opinions. Opinions are like gnosis. Everybody has it. They don't look the same. The facts are facts. You have taken another man's wife. You have killed your husband. Thou says the Lord, God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel. When God gets to this level of telling you your history, you have, you, have, you, have, you have spoiled it. You have blown it. Thus says the Lord, God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel, and I deliver you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your keeping. She had ten people. He had ten concubines from Saul for keep, apart from his own six wives. And you think they didn't have their own Viagra. They must have some roots they are eating, you know, because I don't know how you can live with six wives and ten concubines. Well, I've got one more. <laughs> if you don't believe me, go to the marketplace and see Mola. <laughs> And see what they sell is okay. It's called a gumu. <laughs> oh, you know it. <laughs> what do you call it? Okay. <laughs> I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your keeping, and gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if that had been too little. I also would have given you much more. Why have you despised the commandment of the Lord? To do evil in his sight. You have killed Uriah the Hittite with his sword. So God knew about it. Stop there. What did this produce in the life of David? Everyone who cooperated with him used it against him later. Joab who positioned Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle and commanded strong men to withdraw from him. When Abner came to turn the kingdom of Israel to David and Joab went after him and killed him, what did he say? He said, these sons of Zeruiah are too powerful for me, yet I am king. Compromise will always produce captivity. You will not be able to do anything that you should do. You have killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. You have taken his wife to be your wife. And you have killed him with a sword of the people of Ammon. Now, therefore, the sword shall not depart from your house. Because you have despised me, me there being God. And I have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, behold, I will raise up adversity against you from your own house. And I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor. 
and he shall lie with your wives in the sight of this son is going to be right CNN live, live pornography he will be sleeping with them before the television what do you call that thing in the house that they do big brother it will be worse than big brother it will bring all your wives out and he would do it before all of Israel. Let's read. For you did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel, before the sun. So David said to Nathan, I've sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, the Lord has also put away your sin. You shall not die. He canceled the death sentence he pronounced upon himself. If that angel of mercy was not in his life, he had said, Dad! I surely died. That would have been the end of his life. But he canceled it. He said, you surely not die. May God send you angels of mercy. In your hour of depravity, in your hour of, 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 of <laughs> momentary fall and frailty, in the name of Jesus. Let me, come, let me, however, because by this deed, you have given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. Which means the story eventually broke out. And what do you think will happen to the best author who had written many Psalms? That God is holy. God is kind. God is wonderful. Who is going to buy his book and read? Sorry, madam. However, because by this did you have given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme, the child also who is born to you shall surely die. Then Nathan departed to his house. Could he arrest him? How old was David when he died? 70. How old was Abraham when he died? 175. The Bible says, and Abram died full of age. And the Bible says, David died full of age. What do you think fast track David's death? But for Nathan, he was dying slowly when he kept that sin covered. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. Come with me into the book of Psalm. He wrote a psalm. Not, not the psalm of confession. Psalm... 32, Psalm 32, blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. If you go to Proverbs, he said, he who covers his sin shall not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes shall obtain mercy. So why is the Bible contradicting itself? No, God does not want to cover it because he alone is the one who can cover it. Let's read. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones grow. That was when he started dying. When I kept silent, my bones grew old through my groaning all the day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was turned into the drought of summer. Shella, meditate, pause. I acknowledge my sin to you, and my iniquity have not hidden. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Selah, pause again and meditate. For this cause everyone who is godly shall pray to you. In a time when you may be found, surely in a flood of great waters, they shall not come near him. You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. 
You shall surround me with songs of deliverance. Selah. The person who allowed him to sing song of deliverance again was Nathan. By coming into his life and said, you are the man. He was dying slowly. How many things are we covering under our garments? That nobody knows about, but it's killing us. It's time to say, Lord, take control. I bring myself upon your altar like a living sacrifice. Everything that is already in me, destroy me slowly. Take them away from me. Help me, O oh Lord, to totally, to totally be open with you and with those who you set in authority over my life. Nathan was an angel of mercy. By his confrontation, by confronting David, he brought mercy to him. You shall not die. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, may God send you your own angels of mercy. Amen. May they bring the mercy of God to you. Amen. May they bring you to the point of conviction so that you can turn away from your wicked ways and still bounce back in the name of Jesus. I'm going to take this for some two more Wednesdays and I want you to, because you have not heard the whole thing, you will see the role that Nathan eventually played that it was the son of Bathsheba who became king after David. That's what angels of mercy do. Do you understand me? Once your matter is dealt with, they are not carrying it about and hanging it over your head. They help you navigate through that period and ensure that you do not die in vain. There is succession after your mess. Stand to your feet. We thank you, our Father, for the entrance of your world brings light and understanding to the simple. Men who are before us were unsamples unto us so that we can learn how to deal with issues that could ravage our lives and destroy our heritage and destroy even our succession. Father, this day in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the presence of angels of mercy, unique, a unique class of destiny helpers. Let them not be absent in our lives. Help us, O oh Lord, not to get to the place where no one can correct us. Amen. Give us listening ears, Amen. obedient heart, Amen. to those who are set in authority over us, Amen. so that we may not come to ruin or be at the verge of ruin in the midst of the assembly and congregation. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Proverbs chapter 5, and I bring this to a close. We are going to read. I want you to see something there. The title is Paris of Adultery, but I want you to see something critical there. It's more than just adultery. It's, it applies to every area of life. Proverbs chapter 5, listen to it. Let me read to save time. My son, pay attention to my wisdom. I wish every son would listen to their father. When godly people are set over you, it's because they have what you don't have. And God wants you to learn from them. But when you are full of yourself, you cannot be rich because you will not take instruction. You will not take correction. My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Lend your ear to my understanding that you may preserve discretion and your lips may keep knowledge. For the lips of an immoral woman drip honey. Mm. Hello, honey. And her mouth is smoother than oil. But in the end, she's bitter as one wood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps lay hold of hell. Lest you ponder a part of life, her ways are unstable. You do not know them. Therefore, hear me now, my children, and do not depart from the words of my mouth. Remove your way far from her. Do not go near the door of our house. Don't think you will, you will negotiate, you will have a way out. Don't go near the door of our house, lest you give your honor to others and your years to the cruel one. Lest aliens be filled with your wealth and your labors go to the house of a foreigner. And you mourn at last when your flesh and your body are consumed, HIV. And say, how I have hated instruction. 
You see the problem? This is where I'm bringing you. When you don't have helpers of destiny and angels of mercy in your life, when you are full of yourself, you will hate instruction. And you say, how I have hated instruction, and my heart despised correction. I have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined my ear to those who instructed me. I was on the verge of total ruin, where in the midst of the assembly, and the, you are in the church, but in the verge of ruin. Because you now obey your teachers. You will not listen to correction. You will not listen to instruction. David did not try to harass Nathan. He accepted. He said, I've sinned against the Lord. The difference between David and Saul is like North Pole to South Pole. When Samuel said to Saul to obey, he goes, don't let the hold of his garment until he tore it. He said, you must come with me to worship. All the same. He said, you tore your kingdom away today. It's given to a neighbor who is referred from you. Please ask God to help you to be meek, to be teachable. This gra gra will not land you in any good stead. Nah. Nah. This rebellion will keep you in dry place all your life. No, you don't need it. You don't need it. Learn to submit to authority. Ask God for a gentle and quiet spirit. There's great reward in it. That you obey instructions, you listen to your teachers, so that you are not on the verge of ruin in the midst of assembly and congregation. There's no point showing up at every service and still ending in disaster and ruin. Help me, O oh Lord, to be obedient. Those who obey will eat the good of the land. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. If they obey and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Despite the blunder of David, because he listened to instruction, because he obeyed, God rescued him from the consequences of his abominable act. Father, tonight... We ask for a heart that yields to instruction. Hears that recognize the voice of the teacher. The Bible says the voice of strangers are people who not hear. Lord, I pray when you speak to us, we do not ignore you. We do not explain it away. We do not excuse ourselves. We just repent and obey. Help us to the very end that we will not come to ruin the midst of the assembly and congregation. In Jesus' mighty name. And the people said...